Good morning, and welcome in Christ this morning. Um, I will share with you that everybody's got a bulletin. We don't have ushers. We're giving everybody a break right now for this time of year, so I, I'm doing everything without readers and uh, some of us a break. I gave Pam a job right now. Um, so the offering plate is in the back, in the middle there where the bulletins are, right by where Diana Dye is at right now. So with that, does everyone have a bulletin? Okay, I invite you to turn to page two in the bulletin and invite you to stand for our opening dialogue. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You feed the hungry and clothe the naked. You set free those who are bound. You raise up those whose courage falters. You provide for our every need. You have called us from all peoples. You bless your people with peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. For in your wisdom you have formed us. Amen. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join in singing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
pray. Eternal Father, you gave your Son the name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Numbers 6. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. Word of God, word of life. Please read Psalm 8 responsively with me and pay particular attention to the opening line and the closing line that I read. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider your heavens, the works of your hand, fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. Yet you have made them a little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I'm going to make a commentary just quickly. If you look at verse 1 and verse 9, the first word Lord is all capitalized. I will make reference to that in the sermon. Our second reading is from Philippians 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. The celebration of the name of Jesus always falls on January 1st, which is the eighth day of Christmas. This year, it actually falls on a Sunday rather than in the middle of the week. So today we celebrate the name of Jesus rather than our usual service that we do of lessons and carols. For our sermon, I will include a few of my thoughts, but primarily share some scripture notes written by ELCA Lutheran pastor and professor Norman Beck. He writes, For some people there is great joy in the selection of the name of their child. A boy's name and a girl's name may be selected even before the child is conceived, especially when there is great desire to have a child. The name of the parents-to-be may be used in some way, 
or the names of other relatives, sometimes a name of a, an admired hero outside the family circle is chosen. Books listing names and their meanings may be scanned. The selection of the name in some way seems to contribute to the actualization of the child. It makes the child more real. It helps the parents and other relatives get used to the name and get used to the idea of a new person in the family. Medical tests now can determine many factors about the developing child long before the day of birth, including whether the child will be female or male. Possibly in some instances, medical techniques may make it possible for family planning to include the ordering of a particular type of child with certain characteristics, as is already possible to some extent in adoption situations. The name of the child may be selected with greater assurance to depict that which is expected of the child. The Gospel accounts of Matthew and Luke, with their heavy, heavy theological virgin birth accounts, provide similar but separate stories about the selection of the name of Jesus and about how already in the selection of that name, the expectation of God regarding Jesus were revealed. The name Jesus is an indication of the expectation that he would be a savior. For that is the meaning of the name Jesus. It is a vivid expression of messianic hope of the Israelite people, that God would act through a specially chosen representative of God to deliver the people from political oppression and to provide an opportunity for appropriate guidance for their lives. The Matthean tradition utilizes the media resource of an angel appearing in a dream to Joseph to reveal the name and its significance. The Lucan writer uses the most significant angel in the Daniel tradition, Gabriel, to be the bearer of the important message, as we see in Luke 1, 26 to 28, and in Luke 2, 21, the gospel for this day. Before we focus our attention on Luke 2, 21, that, that account, let's look briefly at other various texts selected for use with Luke 2, 21, on this occasion, each and every year. First, we look at Psalm 8. In the Bible, when the word LORD appears in all capital letters, that actually denotes that the Hebrew name for God, which is Yahweh, is being used. As I had you look on page 4 in the bulletin, that is the case with the very first word LORD. So Psalm 8 could be translated, Yahweh, our LORD, what splendor your name has in all the earth. For the psalmists and for the Israelites who have used this psalm, the night sky with its moon and stars brought forth feelings of awe, of appreciation for the Creator, of acclamation of Yahweh, the Lord, as Israel perceives God. With rich poetic imagery, this psalm recognizes the great difference in distance between God and a solitary human figure, afraid of enemies in the dark, but also the closeness of God to each solitary human figure who has been given great authority and responsibility over all the other creatures of the world. The only appropriate response a human being can make is to give glory to the name of the Lord, ending the psalm of acclamation as it began. Use of this psalm by Christians on this day of celebration for the holy name of Jesus is another indication that in many respects, Jesus is for Christians what Yahweh was for the ancient Israelites and for Jews today. The name of Jesus is acclaimed among us because Jesus is for us creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. One God, even as God for us. We too have our being in our great differences and distance from God, and in our closeness to God, especially as we perceive that God has come to us in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. 
And so we give glory to the name of Jesus, holy for us on this day. Then we look at our first readings from Numbers 6, 22 to 27. It is said in this text that through the use of this great threefold benediction, the priests of Israel, that would be Aaron and his sons, were to put the name of Yahweh on the people of Israel. Then Yahweh will bless them. The name is an instrument, a means by which the blessings of the Lord is bestowed. Take note that a version of what we today call the Aaronic blessing appears in that large cross that hangs in the entry vestibule. I had to make sure I didn't say vegetable, okay? <laughs> I realized I did that in my practicing, okay? The entryway down there across from the elevator. That large cross hangs on the wall, and it says in there, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. Please look at that cross as you leave today. With that being said, Pastor Beck continues saying, The triple blessing is of interest here. It is common in the Israelite tradition to repeat a statement using parallel expressions for emphasis and effectiveness. Hebrew poetic speech in literature generally follows the pattern of saying many things twice. When we have something expressed three times, as in this great threefold benediction, we are being told this is especially important. It is of great importance that you put the name of Yahweh upon the people and that Yahweh bless them. The same emphasis upon the importance of putting the name of God upon us in the name of Jesus and upon God blessing us in the name of Jesus is appropriate for us as Christians. Now let's look at our second reading from Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Keep in mind that this is one of the early Christian hymns, the words in this reading. The name that is said in this tremendous hymn to Christ, to have been bestowed upon Jesus the Christ by God as a result of Jesus emptying himself and becoming obedient to the point of death on the cross. That name bestowed is not the name Jesus, it is not the name Christ, but it is the name Lord as you see at the ending of that hymn. Our studies of the political situation of the first century are helping us to recognize more fully that the word Lord is often highly, uh, highly a political designation and not merely a social or religious one. Paul here in this text was saying that in God, in view of Jesus' death in a crucifixion inflicted by the Roman state, under Caesar, had given to Jesus Christ the social, political, religious title of Lord. Paul calls him Lord. So not Caesar, but Jesus Christ should be for all times, in all places. And by all people, including Caesar, should be acclaimed as Lord. To Jesus as Lord every knee shall bend, and Jesus as Lord, every tongue shall confess. Surely, therefore, his name is holy. Now we return to our gospel from Luke. In Luke 2.15, the, the Lord is Yahweh, who sends messages by means of angel intermediaries. According to the Lucan writer, the most important of these intermediaries, the angel Gabriel, had brought the message to Mary that she would conceive a male child by the power of the Holy Spirit that would come upon her. The angel Gabriel said that Mary should call her male child Jesus and that he would be called Son of the Most High. He would be called holy because he would be God's Son. And because he would be, as his name indicates, a Savior, who according to Luke 2.11, would be Christ the Lord. Luke 2.21 merely indicates that Mary did what the angel intermediary had commanded. 
she gave to her eight-day-old son the name of Jesus. Since he would save his people, and since he would be this savior figure, certainly his name would be holy to his first followers. As his followers today, we continue to declare his name to be holy on this special day, eight days after we have celebrated his birth. As our hymn of the day in verse 3 says, The name of Jesus charms our fears and bids sorrows cease, sings, sings music in the sinner's ears, brings life and health and peace. So please turn to page 6 in our bulletin or to ELW 886 as we sing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. I invite you to stand. Please note in the service of the word, we don't use this service very often. We don't list all the names of those in prayers, but those names are on page nine for you to lift up in prayers. So for our prayers, we use the service of the word responsive prayer. O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your wonderful spirit. Let my mouth be full of your praise. Every day will I bless you. And praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. O God, our salvation, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave. And crowns me with mercy and kindness. Lord, hear my prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds, we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
received the ironic blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Please turn to page 8 for our ascending hymn. It is way in the manger. Christ the Savior is born, go in peace, proclaim this good news.